for you students of grade 5. Uh, I wish that you're safe back home and I wish that you're enjoying this time by your family. Well, uh, last class we talked about the plan or how to plan for a fable and uh, this class is going to be a revision for the whole unit. So if you've missed something during our explanations in the past days, now you've got the chance to catch up. Well, let's get started then. We had a lot of things during this unit. Uh, revision. So a lot of things during this unit. We started with fable. Actually, this unit discusses the fable. It is said to discuss the fable. Uh, we say, what is fable? Huh? Exactly. It's a story. Fable is a kind of story with animal characters and it is said to teach a lesson. It has moral. So three things, if you mention them, that means you got the, the, the hand of the fable. The first one is story. The characters are animals. Three, it is there to teach a moral or a lesson. Moral means lesson. This is a fable. And you're going to be asked to write fables. Okay? I have given you the, the, the way to plan for a fable. And uh, I hope that you start practicing writing your fables. We shifted from fable and we got to something called Proverbs. Proverbs. What is proverb? What is the proverb? Exactly. Well, proverb is a saying or an expression said to teach a lesson. Said to teach a lesson. Well, uh, there are a lot of uh, famous proverbs like a friend in need is a friend indeed. That means the, 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 the best friend or the friend that you can depend on is the friend you find in time of, of need, when you need him. Another proverb like, it is no use crying over the spilt milk. It is no use crying over the spilt milk. I mean, if the, the, the milk is already spilt, so crying is not going to get it back as it was. And we say this proverb when somebody has lost something, but he is still cannot move on or he's desperate about it. We tell him that it is not it is no use crying over this milk. No. I mean pass pass on. Like uh, get over it. That's it. So uh, I have given examples for proverbs. Uh, I hope that you get back to them. And uh, last time I remember I've given uh, an exercise of proverb. Uh, I hope that you have done it by now. Uh, from Burva, we have jumped to idioms. We talked about the idioms and we say that idiom uh, is when you say something but you actually mean a thing or a different thing. Like if I say that uh, take somebody under your wings, we say that we don't mean actually to take him or take her under your wings. Because you don't have wings, do you? No, you don't. Well, to take somebody under your wings, we mean to take care of that person, to look after him or after her. That way is meant by take somebody under your wings. So, take somebody under your wings is an idiom. Another idiom, like he has a memory of a fish. He has a memory of a fish. We don't mean that he's actually and he's really, literally has a memory of a fish. We don't mean that. We mean that he forgets a lot, like fish. Anyway, so that was the idiom. And then we shifted to something else. We talked about the alliteration alliteration and we say that alliteration is a repetition of the first consonant sounds of two or more neighboring words 
like to dig deep down, dig deep down. And as I mentioned, when we deal with alliteration, we're not dealing with letters. We are not dealing with letters at all. For instance, look at these two words, and you can understand me well. If I say, Four fox. Four fox. Do we have an alliteration here? Yes, we do. Yes, we do have an alliteration. It's fa and fa. Four fox. We have an alliteration. Same letters, same sounds. But sometimes the letters are not uh, actually the, 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 the sound is not like the letters that we have. For instance, look at these two words. Ta and Car and key. Car and key. Same sound, different letters. Still, we have an alliteration. Here we do have an alliteration. Why? Because it is the same sound. We're not talking about the letters. The letters are different. C and K, they are different. But actually, the sound is same. It's ka. Car and key. Same sound. Then we have an alliteration. Here we do have an alliteration. And here we do have an alliteration as well. Look at these two words now. Sorry. King and no. King and no. Look, both of them start with the same letter, which is K, but the the sound is different. This is K and this is a silent letter, unpronounced letter. Okay? So, K and no. This word starts with K and this word starts with Na. There is no alliteration over here. We don't have an alliteration. Same letters, different sounds, we don't have an alliteration. Another word, like Have an hour. Oh, have an hour. Have an hour. Okay. Have, which means take. Have an hour. Same letters, different sounds. This is have. It starts with have, and this is hour. It starts with hour. Okay. So we don't have an illustration here. We don't have. Yes, we don't. We don't have an alliteration here. So that's why I keep telling you that we are dealing with sounds. We're not dealing with letters at all. I hope you got my point. D. Uh, I say that as an example of the question that I've been asked. Uh, I will give you a word like uh, note. And I ask you to write a word with the same sound like note. Any word that has the same first sound like no. This is the kind of question that I uh, generally ask my students when I get to this uh, lesson. No, find anywhere that it starts with not, not N, not sound, okay, like no. If you found anywhere, it's done. D. That was the alliteration. Then uh, we have jumped uh, the, the, the last class to the how to plan to write a fable or planning for fable telling or telling a fable and uh, we say the most important elements to find in your stories are actually I need to erase this so just a minute the first thing when you plan for writing a fable uh, put these things in mind, like the setting, where is going to be your setting, the place and time of your story and the weather conditions. You got to describe all these things uh, in the first paragraph. The story is going to have uh, three paragraphs.
We say that the story is going to uh, be written into three paragraphs. Uh, for example, if your page in your notebook looks this way, so the story is going to look this way. This is title, and then this is paragraph one, and this is paragraph two, and this is the last paragraph. Your story will look this way. You will leave uh, one line empty between the paragraphs. Good. So we, we said that uh, the, the, you, you'll start with setting. So the first paragraph is going to be the setting of your story. Uh, for the title, I prefer that you write the title after you finish with the story. Don't start with the title, end up with the title. Okay? Finish writing the story, then shift to the title from the story that you've written. This is the setting. Uh, when you get done with the setting, also please, uh, I want you before to get done with the first paragraph, mention something about the main character. We said the main character is the most important character, or the main characters are the most important characters in your story. Uh, so you have the setting, then the characters. And we said characters are people, animals, anything in your story. Deal. Uh, for the characters, like after you finish with the setting, you say that uh, you'll end the paragraph with there was a lion, there was a goat, the, a, a lion goat actually. <laughs> they are happy all the time while they're playing uh, with no care the world at all. So there was a goat, there was an elephant, there was a giraffe, there was a crocodile, as you see, because it's fable, so you're going to stick to animals. When you shift to the second paragraph, you mention something about the problem. We said your story must contain a problem. There should be a problem in your story. Uh, something like terrible happening to the characters, to the main characters. What is happening to them? And since you got a problem, of course, you got to have a solution. You got to have a solution. How the problem was solved, who solved the problem, how it was solved, how it has been ended. Uh, this is going to be in this paragraph, okay, and the paragraph after, and the solution ended up here, in the ending of the story. Then you have, because it's fable, you have the moral or the lesson that we get from the story, we learn from the story. If you got done with that, now you got done with your fable, you can add up the title and boom, you have fable. Uh, I expect by now that you start practicing uh, writing fables. You practice writing fables and uh, whatever you write, you send it to me, I read it, I promise, I'm the will of the Lord. And then after that, I'm going to send, it, uh, to send my report back to you to tell you what's wrong with the story and what's good about it also. Uh, we have done the first unit now and the coming class after the will of the God uh, is going to be uh, the, the first class uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the second unit. So we're going to shift to the second unit and we're going to get to know about it. Uh, till then, stay safe, protect your families, protect yourselves, wish you all the best and uh, God bless each and every one of you. Now we have finished, we have finished with our class and uh, that's it. So see you later, alligator. Bye for now.